today uh, we have Rebecca Maxwell, um, who is an alumni of Lamar, uh, marketing major, general business, general business manager. Manager. here, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, she currently works for the BBB, mm -hmm. um, and she's going to talk to you guys today about the internships. Right. Thank you so much, Amy. How are y'all doing today? Good. Good. Let me hear that a little bit louder. Good. Good. One more time. Great. Great. Okay. I need y'all to talk to me today. Okay. Um, like you said, my name is Rebecca Maxwell. I work with the Better Business Bureau, and we're going to be talking about internships today and some of my, my, of my previous experience with internships. Um, one thing, I'm going to apologize for two things. First of all, my format for my PowerPoint got a little mixed up, so if things kind of get a little funky looking, I uh, try to fix it real quick, but I hopefully I caught everything. And two, I have some videos to show you. And unfortunately, we have a really irritating, buzzing, beeping noise that's going to happen whenever we have to turn on the sound for the video. So bear with us, and we'll get through it. Um, just to give me a kind of an idea of where you all are at, I'm going to ask you all a couple of questions. So how many, or what um, year are you here at Lamar? Junior, seniors? Seniors. 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 Sophomore. 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 Junior, sophomores, juniors, seniors, freshmen. Okay. Cool. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And majors. Finance. Human resources. Finance, human resource, communication. Accounting. 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 Family studies. Family studies. Okay. Management information systems. Wow, we got a lot of different ones. So lots of business majors, a variety of business majors, family studies. Was there another one in there? Accounting, finance, communication. HR. HR, okay. Okay. Awesome, great. Well, like Amy said, um, I was a general business major when I was here at Lamar. I did a concentration in retail management and graduated in 2011 and then ended up, decided to go ahead and get my master's degree right away and went, um, went and studied abroad for my master's degree. And I had really enjoyed the marketing and communication classes here at Lamar, so I decided to do a international marketing master's program. And so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that later. But the main thing to talk about today is internships. How, has anyone here done an internship before? Awesome, where did you intern at, if you don't mind? Orange Savings Bank. Orange Savings Bank, okay. And what were you doing there? Um, I went around all the different departments. All the different departments, awesome. Did you get to work on any special projects or anything like that? I switched all the names for the, they switched over vice presidents whenever I was there. Okay. So I had to go through all the accounts. I started in HR, which is why I picked it. Okay, awesome. So that was a real, a great way to get some real experience with your degree. Oh, that's sort of thing. Awesome. And then you did internships? Yes. Uh, I did this summer at Matthew Shores. Oh, okay. Down the road as an event coordinator. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm in charge of launching the new collection that we have. It's actually the kitchen of October. Okay. So here at Hong Kong. Matthew Shores. October 15th. That sounds like a good time. So you, communications ended up being an event planner for Matthew Stewart. Yeah. That's great. Real practical experience. Awesome. So you two are probably ahead of the game. Probably you're gonna know everything I'm gonna talk to you about today, but bear with me. And um, for you all who haven't done an internship, then hopefully this presentation will inspire you to go out and apply for an internship if you haven't already done so, and to look, think about um, different companies you might want to do internships with, okay? So to get us started, I got a short uh, video I'm going to show you. And this is where I have to run and turn on the sound and then come back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Berger from internqueen.com and I am known as the Intern Queen. Okay, so take a deep breath. Internships can be a long, grueling process, but I promise once you get that internship, it is going to be so worth it. So you're going to make a list of all of the companies where you see yourself working. 
Now remember, a lot of students make the mistake of only applying for two or three internships and they're at big brand name companies. So you want to take a second, read through all the internship listings if you're on sites like internqueen.com or wherever you might be looking, read over all the information because some great opportunities might be associated with companies that you haven't heard of before. And that's okay. Go after those companies as well. Go after a variety of companies, 10 to 20 companies for the summer. It is very competitive. 2011 is the most competitive internship season ever, so you need to be prepared. And remember, don't take no for an answer. You're not going to stop until you land an internship. So be confident. This is definitely a process that you can handle. I'm a big fan of blocking out large chunks of time to get this stuff done. So block out your time. Let's get the applications done first, and then we'll follow up, and we're going to get you an internship. No problem. So to apply for an internship, you need your resume, your cover letter, your letters of recommendation. You want to always have letters of recommendation on hand, so if that opportunity does require them, you always have some and you're always ready and prepared and focused. Now if you're going after internships in the graphic design world, in the publishing world, in the writing world, you also might need an online portfolio or writing samples. Just remember to always customize and target your materials for the position you're applying for. All right, this is the biggest day of your life and you don't even know it yet. Internships are priceless. Take a deep breath, walk into that interview, button your jacket, look nice, you know, make sure you're uh, nicely dressed and groomed properly. Go in there, introduce yourself with a firm handshake, speak clearly, make sure you're paying attention, make eye contact. If you have any notes with you, don't be looking down at them the entire time. It's okay to reference some notes at the end. And if you haven't gone to that company website, while you're waiting for that interview, get on your phone and go to that company website. Look at their mission statement. Look at the About Us. Google them really quickly. Look up who their clients are, if they've been in the news lately. Make sure you are knowledgeable about the company. When the employer says to you, do you know what our company does? You should have some sort of idea. Don't go into this stuff blindly. Good luck. Internships are the opportunities of a lifetime. So at your internship, you want to make the most of it. Now, a lot of students get the internship, they're excited, hooray, they got the internship of their dreams, and then they stop. Okay, I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. So that gives you a, just a brief overview of what you would need to do an internship. So let's talk about, a little bit about why you even want to do an internship, okay? Um, I was really fortunate whenever I was here at Lamar, I had the opportunity to do an internship here actually in the Career and Testing Center. And then while I was getting my master's degree, I actually did two different internships. So it was a really great opportunity for me to gain experience. And that's really what you're looking to do with an internship. Um, those of you who have already done one, that's, you know that. That's why you want an internship. There's that commercial I always hear on the radio or used to hear a while back, um, how do I get experience if no one will hire me? That's how you get um, experience is with an internship, okay? Most of the time companies when they're hiring interns, they know they're either in school or have just recently graduated. That's usually the type of person they're looking to apply for an internship. So they know that you're not going to have all of the experience in the world. They know that you need to build your resume, and so that's what they're trying to offer you. They're trying to give you a better opportunity to build a resume, build some experience, get some good things that you can learn. Also, um, one of the best things that I've, I've been able to find with internships is it gives you connections. It helps you build your network, especially here in Southeast Texas. It's so true that saying it's not what you know, but it's who you know. That's Southeast Texas. Uh, most of the jobs that I've gotten here, even the internship here at Lamar, I found out about it not, um, not because I was actively seeking an internship, actually, but because <coughs> someone told me, hey, we have an internship open at the College of Business, and it would be something you would be great at. You should apply for it. And then uh, my current job, actually, with the Better Business Bureau started out as an internship because I happened to meet the president and CEO at a Rotary meeting that I was giving a presentation to, he came up to me afterwards and said, hey, I don't have a full-time position open for you right now, but I want to hire you. Would you be interested in an internship? 
I just graduated with my master's degree. Wasn't really what I was looking for, but I was like, well, sure, I'll try. It gets me, it was, um, that was back in November. So I was like, it'll give me something to do over the holidays and not too stressful, that'll be nice. And ended up turning into a full-time position. So that was really great. So it gives you a little bit of network, gives you some experience. Um, great opportunity a lot of times to transition into a job, into a full-time position. It also gives you the great experience of being able to figure out if your degree, what you're studying, is actually what you want to do long term. You might be uh, pursuing a degree that you don't really know a whole lot about. You decided to start doing it because you were unhappy with what you were previously doing at a job, or you might have just you know, come to Lamar right after graduating high school and you thought, well, you know, this sounds like a great degree to get. That's where people make money, so I'll go and do this degree. And you might not have had the opportunity to really look into, really kind of do some soul searching and figure out what you really want to do. So an internship is a great way to explore some different opportunities. Then if you, um, you know, it's just as important to figure out what you want to do, and it's also important to figure out what you don't want to do. An internship can give you that. I had a friend who actually did an internship while still going to Lamar. Um, she was a marketing uh, major, and she got a marketing degree. She found out through doing that internship that um, she, or she was doing a marketing internship with a company. She found out that she did want to do marketing, but she did not like the construction industries where she thought she was going to go into, and that was where her internship was with a construction firm. And so she ended up deciding, okay, that's not the kind of industry I, I want to work with, so she took a different direction than she had been thinking about for the last two, three years. So it's also a great way to figure out what you do and you don't want to do. So that's a little bit about internships. I found it interesting, I started doing this, um, whenever I started thinking about this presentation, uh, I started looking into famous people who had done internships in the past, um, how they got started, and also the ones who did unpaid internships. Because there are those out there that you know that you have an internship opportunity, but the company doesn't pay while you're um, doing the internship. So sometimes you do need to take an unpaid internship. So one of the ones that came up and I thought was rather interesting was Steve Jobs. Everyone knows who he who, who he was, uh, president and CEO of Apple. Um, a lot of you probably know about his story. But at 12 years old, he was actually working on a project at home. 12 years old. Ended up calling the um, the owner of Hewlett Packard, and because he was in the phone book, just found his number in the phone book, called him up, said he needed some parts, went and met with him, and ended up at 12 years old working a summer internship with the company, and he was actually on the assembly line working with them. So all he was doing was putting in screws. That's all he was doing. So it's not the most exciting internship you might think, but for a 12 year old, this was a dream come true for him. So he did do that. Ursula Burns is another one I thought was really interesting. She now works for uh, Xerox. And um, she actually started out as an intern. She had uh, done her degrees. And she now has become um, the, one of the first African American women in a Fortune 500 company. And she started out as an intern. So that was really interesting um, to see. I think hers was, yeah, hers was a summer internship also. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you do have a you know a job and you're going to school and you just can't justify doing an internship during your long semesters, your fall and, um, fall and spring, then a summer internship is a great way to get some experience. A short, you know, three month long internship is a good way to do that. The other one, this was actually interesting because Bill Gates had an internship at 17 years old, unpaid. It was an unpaid internship. And um, he actually was quoted later in life as saying that internship showed him he did not want to go into politics. Because this was actually an internship with the House of Representatives. Um, and he actually collected um, buttons and pins that they would uh, sell for campaigns and turned around and sold those as a way to supplement his income because it was an unpaid internship. So something comes up and you see an unpaid internship, you're interested in sounds really great, sounds like great experience, but it's not, it's unpaid, then um, don't give up on that. Think about, get creative about some ways you can make money other than the internship. Does anyone like fashion in here? I was a retail management, got a couple of hands up. Um, I was retail management, did a retail management concentration here at Lamar. I really liked it. 
And this one I loved because Betsy Johnson got an internship because she sent a thank you card. She actually had done an event um, with this magazine and ended up tracing or drawing um, a picture of a shoe onto a thank you card and sent it. And whenever um, the publisher of the magazine had gotten the thank you card, she came in and she showed somebody else, like, look, look what Betsy can do. She can draw. We, they didn't know it. So she actually got an internship and started her fashion career because of a thank you card that she had sent. So we'll talk a little bit more about thank you cards in a minute. Another one, this again was an unpaid uh, internship. Steven Spielberg got his start with Universal Studios as um, an intern started his career. And so that's another example of um, doing, doing an internship that ended up developing his career. How many of you here have seen In Pursuit of Happiness? A lot of people, awesome. Chris Gardner, um, I'm gonna play a clip of the movie. He um, also had an internship, ended up helping his career so much. You all know the story since you've seen the movie. And we'll just pull this one up. Poor Amy. Thank you, Amy. <laughs>
know, you're there for experience. You're there to, sometimes you go to all these different departments and learn what they all do. Um, you do sometimes have to run and get coffee, do coffees, stuff envelopes. I had to do that one internship I had, but uh, get mailings ready and just do a lot of stuff that you're sitting there going, okay, I have a degree and I'm putting envelopes together for mailings, but it gets your foot in the door and those are things that have to be done. So if, I very much encourage you, if you have an internship and you see yourself in a situation that you're doing something and you're like, why am I doing this? I have a degree. Why am I going and getting coffee? Fair. Just do it. Do the grunt work and it'll end up being much better. And um, one day you'll be hiring interns who are having to do the grunt work for you and you'll be able to relate to them. So what do you need when um, applying for an internship? Obviously, resume cover letter. Those are great. Like Amy said, go to the Career and Testing Center and get your resume critiqued. Get your cover letter looked over. You'd be amazed at how many people apply for internships. Um, especially for large companies. So if your first impression is your cover letter and your resume, you want that to look as professional as you possibly can. Also, by having it critiqued by somebody else and having a conversation with someone like a career advisor, they'll be able to pull out some key words and things from previous experience you have had. Maybe you've been a waitress or a waiter or you've worked at a, as a bank teller or you've know, done something else that uh, isn't really related to your degree or the company that you might be applying for, but by talking with somebody else about those experiences, they might be able to pull out some key phrases and key words that you can put on your resume, and that's great. Letters of reference are also great, or at least having um, talked with a few people, professors, previous employers who would be willing to give a reference for you, maybe over the phone and making sure that they're okay with that uh, before you start applying for internships. Now, I put up here, fix any barriers you have. Whenever I was a student at Lamar and I applied for my first internship with the Career and Testing Center, I actually already had two part-time jobs uh, that I was working. And so a lot of people, whenever they see internships, a lot of the time they're posted as 15-week internships. And as you, you see that, and some students I've had tell me, well, I don't want to give up my part-time job that I know works around my school schedule and I'll be able to have it for the next year and a half, two years, three years while I'm going to school. I don't want to give that up and go work a 15-week internship. Don't get scared by that 15 weeks because most of the time, companies will want to keep you part-time as long as they possibly can. And that's something to ask whenever you apply. Go ahead and apply for it. You might get into the interview and by going to the interview, you might decide, well, I'm not even interested in this internship <coughs> after going to this interview, or I'm not interested in working for the company after all. So it's better to go, go to the interview, open-minded, and then get asked them that up front. Say, well, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about the 15 week. Is that a possibility of continuing after the 15 weeks? Well, you know, if you like what you see, will you be able to keep me? Or are you, you know, some companies are very strict. They end after 15 weeks and they move on to somebody else. So. Don't be afraid of that, um, and definitely look into it, even if it has a 15 week barrier. I ended up with the Career and Testing Center. I worked there uh, for over a year. I was a uh, junior when I applied for the internship and continued that uh, working there part time until I graduated. So it worked out perfectly for me. I even was able to work through the summers. So it can be a great thing. If you think I have no time for an internship, um, even if you have a part-time job that you're willing to give up, but you might have lots of extracurricular activities, class and all that, all that sort of thing, don't give up class, but definitely make time for an internship. Just like some of those uh, individuals we looked at who got their career started off with an internship, it's definitely something to, to take the time to do. I have in here two thank you cards that were mentioned earlier. Send a thank you card or an email or something after you have had that interview, that first interview. Send a thank you to whoever, whoever was your interview uh, interviewer, okay? That's a great way to, you know, and it's great if you can say, hey, I really enjoyed meeting you, and if there was anything particular that came up in your conversation or in the interview, that's a great way to reference back to it. Or if there was something that you didn't get to touch on, and you, even after they might have asked you, do you have any, anything else you want to add? anything else you want to talk about and you still weren't quite comfortable enough to talk about something else 
Maybe you have some question on your resume that you wanted to clarify. Um, a, a thank you email or a thank you card is a great way to clarify that too. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, it, I was just, you just answered. I wanted to know if it's better to send a thank you card or to email a thank you card. Because I heard it's better that it comes into 48 hours. Or right, yeah. If you can, what I have done in the past, I've done both. Because one time um, they were doing like second interviews like the next week. And so I wanted to make sure that they had gotten my thank you card. So I emailed the thank you email. Um, in the past, I've also done handwritten. Everyone still says they like handwritten notes, but that's starting to go away because everyone's so used to getting email. So it's really what you're comfortable with. If you're good with sending email, um, and especially if, like I said, if you have a second interview, if they tell you, they usually they'll tell you kind of what to expect at the end. Hey, we're going to be doing second interviews next week. If they say that, send an email. That way you know they got it. And um, that way, after your second interview, you can again send an email or you can do a handwritten. So it depends on the company. Sometimes they'll say, okay, well, we're going to be making a decision at the end of the month. So that might be an opportunity where you could send a handwritten note. It's what you're comfortable with. And depends on if you're comfortable with your handwriting. <laughs> if they can't read your thank you note, might as well not even send it. So if you're better with on the computer, then send it on the computer. Okay. Also, what you need to do, get the word out. I'm going to show you a video a little bit later. Uh, and in the video, it says, tell your dentist, tell your doctor, tell your family, tell your friends, tell everybody, tell your flight attendant that you want an internship. And that really is true. Once you start looking for an internship, start telling people. Tell, tell your parents, tell your friends, tell if you have a significant other, tell them. And you never know who you're going to run into. Even tell professors. They're great resources for finding internships because they have connections in industries that you probably want to work for. So find a professor that you connect with, that you really enjoy their class, or you're studying what they study in school, and talk to them about an internship. And they might have some great connections for you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience um, with internships in general, and then some things that I got from internships. Like I said, I ended up studying abroad for my master's degree. I ended up going to Scotland and had a wonderful time. Ended up meeting a lot of great people. Was very fortunate to be able to graduate with my master's. And I built so many, so many skills that I never expect, expected within a very short time period. My master's degree was only a one year degree. So they stripped it down. You weren't expected to have a job. You weren't expected to do hardly anything extracurricular because you were in class or you had assignments you were working on constantly. Luckily, with the program, the reason I decided to go for it is because they incorporate a lot of opportunities for real life experience with companies. So the first one that we did, I worked working in a group of international students. Um, and we actually worked with an oil lubrication system a company manufacturer there in Scotland called Scott Euler. And their project that they had that they wanted us to do as interns working in a group was to research the Chinese market. And so we actually did a lot of research, called people, did a lot of online research so we couldn't actually afford to go over there. We tried to work that out to where we could get a trip out of it, but it didn't really work. So did a lot of research and um, gained some awesome experience in not only research, but practical research for a company. Did a lot of communication with the company, lots of meetings where we're having to go and meet with executives of that company, Scott Euler, asking what exactly they wanted, what they were looking for, and then turned around at the end of the program, we actually gave a presentation to that company and gave suggestions as to what we thought they should do if they wanted to move into selling in that market. So that was some great practical experience with not only um, research, but actually presenting to a company. As a marketing major, I was you know, going to be expected to do pitches. Um, I've worked a little bit in sales now, so you're having to present not only yourself, but your product. For us, that was our research. We had to present what we learned and back up why we had um, established the reasons that they should move into the market, where, and all that sort of thing. So that was some really great experience. Another one that I did specifically with marketing was we had another team effort 
that was um, branding. We had a company come into our program and said they wanted to have, give the opportunity to us students to actually to develop a brand for a new soft drink, um, actually energy drink, that they were developing. And so we worked, we had a little under 300 students who all worked in groups of about eight, seven or eight people, and we developed brands. And then at the end, after we did research again, lots of research, it was a master's degree, so they expect you to research everything. <laughs> and um, ended up researching it, developing it, we had a fantastic group of people to work with. I was really fortunate because we had a graphic design artist in our group. So he actually, he and um, his girlfriend at the time developed uh, a logo, developed the brand name, all that sort of thing. And so we really worked well together as a group and pitched the idea to the owners of that company. And we were really fortunate they actually chose our group's um, design. So now you can find Supernatural on Facebook, Twitter, and in stores uh, in Scotland if you ever go up to Edinburgh, Glasgow especially. You can actually find our brand in stores. So for marketing, if anyone, is anyone here in market communications? Was anybody in here a marketing major? Okay. Well, um, y'all should still be excited about this because I mean, if you're doing work and you actually end up seeing that in in whatever industry you're going into, you know, you might be writing papers one day or working with a great company. That's really exciting to see. Whenever you can actually see the hard work you've put into it and then see that it's actually being used out there in the market. And both of those, not only was it great experience with research, presenting, pitching an idea to a company, but we were actually working in groups, like I said. And that is a fantastic thing to start learning now as you're doing your degrees here at Lamar. Take advantage of working in groups because that's something you're going to be expected to do later in life when you get a job and working for a company. You're always working with other people. Most of the time you are. You might end up in a job that's mostly by yourself, but... Um, you know, 85% of the time, even my father, who's a computer analyst, he still works in groups all the time. So he does a lot of programming on his own, but he has to get with group meetings, um, do group projects together, work with people from all over the world. So doing group research is really important. All right. And now a little bit more close to home, um, here in Southeast Texas, we have the Better Business Bureau. Is anyone familiar with the BBB? Okay, some of y'all are. Okay. Has anyone ever used the BBB, the website, or anything like that? Awesome! Got one person who's... Oh, a couple people. Great. Um, well, we are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, so go like us, follow us, search for us. Whenever I came home from my master's degree last September, a year ago now, um, I started looking for jobs. I had had all this school experience, all this education, now it's time to really, uh, had a great time doing some other internships, so it was time to look for a job. And this is a situation that I mentioned earlier, where I came back and I was at a local Rotary meeting, giving a presentation, this is what I've done. I was an ambassadorial scholar with Rotary, that's how I was able to afford to go abroad to get my degree, so I came back and was presenting about it. And John Haskell, who's the president and CEO of our BBB here in Southeast Texas, came up to me afterwards, and he's just like I said earlier, he said, you know, I don't have a full-time position right now, but I have an internship, and I want you to come work for me. And it happened to be in um, marketing. It was a marketing and business services internship. And so I said, great. It'll get me at least through the holidays. Um, I wasn't so excited about working part-time, but it was something that I got involved with them in November and really enjoyed it and fell in love with the different aspects that they had me doing, the different tasks they had me doing. Like I said, I was working as a marketing assistant. I had special projects that they helped, uh, they let me help with as far as our torch boards, which were in May. I was already working on that back in November. We had, um, this picture is from a senior expo that we went and kind of did a, a table at and passed that information to seniors who were coming through. And then I was actually able to put my degree to use by using social media because my in, my dissertation at uh, in Scotland, I had a lot of social media components in it. So they had a Twitter account and a YouTube account, but it wasn't really used very often. They've been using Facebook, but they hadn't really developed Twitter or YouTube, so they gave those projects to me too. So it was a great opportunity to really be in charge of something, to get some real-world experience working for a nonprofit, 
here in Southeast Texas. And so I, I jumped at the opportunity and I'm really happy I did. It also gave me some major, major networking opportunities here in Southeast Texas. You're working with businesses, you're working with consumers, business owners. Uh, I was a marketing assistant, so I was helping plan events and things like that going out into the community. And so it was a great opportunity to meet more people and I have actually been offered a couple different jobs because of that. But I ended up deciding to stay with the BBB. They did offer me a full-time job after doing my internship with them. And so I'm now the director of their In Pursuit of Ethics program that they do for high schools and businesses that are accredited with the Better Business Bureau. And so that's really exciting for me because that's an example, again, of an internship leading into a full-time position. And again, like, like I said earlier, as far as maybe taking an unpaid internship, you might think, well, this is some great experience, but it's unpaid. I don't know if I want to do that. Well, you know, jump at the opportunity. If you can afford to do it, try it. And, um, you know, you're not tied down to it. It's, it's an internship, so if you get down to the end and you don't want to continue with that company, fine. But at the end, they might offer you a full-time job. So keep your mind open. Okay. So we're going to go back to that other video. They don't do anything. You need to make the most of it. So at your internship, you want to make the most of it. Now, a lot of students get the internship. They're excited. Mm -mm. Hooray, they got the internship of their dreams, and then they stop. They don't do anything. You need to make the most of any opportunity that presents itself. So that means connecting with as many people as you possibly can at that internship opportunity. Introduce yourself, your first name, your last name, to as many people as possible. These are your professional contacts. You will be in touch with these people forever, and they are priceless, priceless connections. Now, if you're sitting in the corner the second that you have nothing to do, get out of that chair, go up to that internship coordinator, and tell them, is there anything I can do? Can I help? Always offer to help. Never let them catch you sitting in the corner doing nothing. And if that person doesn't need help, who else in the office can I help? Again, you want to meet as many people as possible so that you're constantly building your professional connections at the internship. If you want to learn more, go to Media Bistro How-To Videos. All right. So I'm going to go back to this Have that as readily available, so you have to be a little bit more active. 
active in asking questions. If there's a particular um, department that you never really thought you would be interested in, but now working for a company, you realize, oh, that sounds really interesting. I never thought of working in HR, or you know, I never thought about working in communications, but that sounds interesting to me now. Go and ask some questions. Check with your supervisor for your internship and say, hey, is it okay if I go spend a day shadowing someone in the HR department and learn a little bit more about what they do? A lot of times people hire interns because they want to not only get someone to help them part time or even full time sometimes, but also they want to have the opportunity for you to get some experience also. So that's something, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And again, build your network. Networking is something that people don't always take advantage of whenever they're in a company. And it's sometimes uncomfortable for some people to do, going up and introducing yourself to a stranger, talking to them, um, learning a little bit more about them, talking about your experiences so far. That's sometimes a little bit uncomfortable for people. But as you do it, the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. That's something that's a skill you have to develop, you have to work on, but building that network um, at an early stage is a great way to start. So. I was never the best of presenters, and I hope I've gotten a little bit better in the years that I've been doing it, but it wasn't always comfortable, but if you keep practicing, it'll get easier. So, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Great. I got another video. It's a little, a little corny, but just to recap what we talked about, it takes you from everything from how to get an internship, okay? So, it's a little silly, but it's the one um, that says it. It says at one point, tell your dentist, tell your flight attendant, all that sort of thing. So, watch that. How to get an internship. If you want to break into an industry, any industry, the best strategy is to be born into a family that owns a business in that field. The next best thing is to get an internship. You will need a computer, a phone, and unflagging tenacity. Step one, pick a field to intern in. Choose something that's exciting to you. You don't have to know a lot about the field. That's what an internship is for. You just need a genuine enthusiasm for learning more about it. Step two, update your resume. Include any work experience or academic study related to the field you want to intern in. Many internships are unpaid. Be prepared to live cheaply. Step three, if you go to a school with an internship coordinator, see if he or she can advise you on your area of interest. Step four, tell everyone that you're looking for an internship. Friends, family, neighbors, dentists, flight attendants. You never know who knows who. Step five, send an email to all the reputable companies in your field, even if they don't officially offer internships people will respond to enthusiastic inquiries. If there's a company you really want to work for, consider contacting high-level people there directly. If they like you, they can make something happen for you right away. Step six, book as many interviews as you can. Step seven, send a thank you note or email after all your interviews. Step eight, when you get an internship, be enthusiastic and work hard. Remember, the people you're working for could give you a real job next year. And besides, everyone hates a lazy intern. Did you know Microsoft founder Bill Gates once interned as a congressional page and supported himself by selling old campaign buttons as collector's items?
to work for their company? What makes you excited about working for their company? You never know what can happen. I mean, I've had conversations with people who ended up getting internships. Uh, when I was in the UK, I had a friend who got an internship with the Defense Department that led into a full-time job because she started contacting people. She was out there actively looking for an internship, so that's great. These are some references um, that I used when I was developing the, the presentation today and also ones that I personally have used. Lamar University Career and Testing Center, it's across, across the uh, hall. That is a great way to find internships. A lot of times, I don't know, because anyone, I know she asked you earlier, but I wasn't um, looking. I know a lot of y'all have done in resume critiques and things like that. A lot of times they'll have companies come in and you can do an interview right here on campus so you don't have to worry about going anywhere. That is a great thing they do. I, I can't say it enough, go and get your resume looked at. Go get your cover letter looked at. Get someone to do a practice interview with you. That's a great way to get a little bit more comfortable with the interview process, okay? And if you wanted to contact me at the Better Business Bureau for anything, please do so. I'm going to have my email up there. I don't mind you emailing me if you have any questions or any more have, want to learn a little bit more about my previous experience with internships, please let me know. And I think we're about done, but does anyone have any questions or comments? Have I inspired any of you to get an internship now? Yes. Yes, yes, yes? okay, great. Well, thank you all so much for your attention today, and I hope